I mean, Kyle, obviously we haven't talked to you in a minute. But when you look at how the offseason went for you guys, is this kind of where you anticipated or what you were aiming at personally? Yeah, I think it's when we first got here, kind of, as you looked at the different challenges that we had and everybody faces around the league, we knew that there was going to be a, a, a time of being patient and, you know, in terms of the cap and, and money and going out and acquiring players, it was going to be through the draft and it was going to be dabbling a little bit in free agency and a different type of pool. Um, and we knew after a couple of years of absorbing that and, um, you know, building through the draft, then we'd have an opportunity to go out and spend a little bit more. And so uh, expectations for us are always the same. You know, we're trying to put the best team you can out there. Uh, to win championships, but obviously there's a little bit more excitement because our young players that we've had the last couple of drafts and how they played, how they performed, taking another step, and then on top of it, some of these veteran guys that have played um, and being a, being able to acquire them as well. In terms of the way you guys have built this roster, especially offensively, do you feel like there's maybe a way that you guys are bucking convention? At least it feels like that with the multiplicity of Running backs. <laughs> right, well, but, yeah, well, running backs, but even just how you use guys. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know that. You know, of course, there's conventional wisdoms, and I think we talked about it before. You know, all those things that are out there, you know, are conventional wisdoms in itself. They're true, right? Because you can find examples of why people believe in those things. But you know. We're just, uh, I think we've said it before, it's not about what, it's about who. You know, when it comes to how you build, there's there's a million different ways to build inside out through the middle, skill talent on the outside, all those kind of things. Um, we believe in what we're doing. Um, each individual player that we bring in is evaluated the same way. We value every position at a high level, and especially it's who's playing that particular position is what we value, how they're going to impact our team. Um, but as far as conventionally, you know, how we play and, you know, we've got a lot of tight ends. It, it, we're we're going we're gonna to adapt, and that's what's so great about Arthur Smith and our, and our coaching staff. Whoever those players are, whatever those positions are, they're going to adapt and put the best, you know, players on the field and attack teams differently. We're a versatile – it's a versatile coaching staff, and we're a versatile team. That way we can attack you in different ways. And in a couple of years we might – draft different positions that all of a sudden they become very valuable to us because of who we're drafting. That's the that's the important part. Globally, do you think you, that the league should look at, consider a change to the way the running backs are handled contractually? There's been a lot of talk of that. On that yeah, period. I don't, I, I, you know, I don't care what anybody else, you know what I mean? I don't look at it that way about what anybody else does. You know, I know what we think. And like, like I said, uh, you know, we care about more about who than what. Um, and we listen. We we go down that when it comes to acquiring players, the draft process, and free agency, and spreading cap out. Every team is in different positions. I think you asked a question last year about building and how do you do it. It's it's unique. It's fluid. It's um, every year is its is its own year. And but we're constantly thinking about two years down the line. You know what I mean? And those kind of things with every position or every decision that we make, whether it is draft or free agency, obviously the cap, you know, impacts a lot of a lot of things, but that could change how we value certain positions might change in three years. You know what I'm saying? Because of different circumstances, you know, and um, but I truly don't I don't look at, you know, I know what other teams think and, and you know, but I know what we think and I believe in what we do, our process and how we look at players, because it truly is about who it's not about, you know, uh, if you're in the top 15, you have to take, you know, this position, this position, this position. Or if you have a lot of money in free agency, you, you got to pay. Here's the positions you pay. Right. Well, you better you better evaluate who who those positions are. You know what I mean? Um, that's what we that's what I believe in. That's what we believe in. Um, and there are times that it might be a conventional wisdom in what we do. You know what I mean? It might be it fall into the the norm. Um, and there's times that we, it might not. You know, and that all depends on the player. The makeup, the medical, the character, the age. There's so many different, you know, varied pr production, um, all those things. So um, I think it's every situation's unique. Kyle, when it comes to undrafted free agents, I mean, you know, I know it's a numbers game to a certain extent, but how much of how much they are able to last in this training camp process and have a shot at making roster validates what you guys do with scouting position as a whole to figure out whether guys are NFL ready or not? 
Yeah, it's it's always you know that process has become so crazy you know post draft, um, but it's a, a lot of times those guys are it's makeup and character as you guys know it's guys that play special teams and are willing to play special teams at any position um, and guys that are wired the right way uh, underdog stories all those things um, but I think our scouting staff does a tremendous job with that you know post draft we're ready we're lined up you have to be there's so many you know guys are are, are going to different spots um, right on the last second uh, but as far as the evaluations and stuff we're so far prepared for it uh, the board we always talk about the board speak to you you know, sometimes you have that board. There's guys still there that that go undrafted, and they're sitting there. You know, that's that's the first guy you go after. You know, and it kind of just falls right down the line. So our preparedness for that moment um, is what I'm I'm impressed with. Uh, and then from there, it's 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 on them to you know, it's on the kid to you know, it's not really us, but it's the kid to be able to make it. But I think we identify those makeup pieces is what I look at. You spoke uh, about the on. excitement with the young players, and Arthur uh, greeted us with uh, telling us he was so fired up in the morning minute he went a little bit long. Yeah. Uh, what do you recognize that everybody has excitement at the start of training camp, but what can you just uh, speak on what you see as that level of excitement around this facility and how much of that maybe is reflected by what is seen as an opportunity in the, in the division? Yeah, I think it's it's more, you know, not so much the division, but it's it's watching the individual players, as you're saying, you know, from you know, the, everybody, not just, you know, the rookies that, you know, we drafted when we got here, but other players that, have, that were here. You know, I think everybody believes in what we're doing from a player perspective. I know we do as a staff in the building, but I think the players believe in what we're doing, where we're going, where we feel like we're going. Um, uh, the excitement of the young players is it's any time that uh, the situation when we first got it, there were young players that had to play and they had to play early and they had to play a lot. Um, some other players didn't. They had to sit and they sat and they kind of got better. And then you saw them year two play or year two make a jump. Um, and now we see them in the off season now where they're at, where they're going. That's the excitement is you're seeing the constant, you know, uh, getting better every every moment that they get because they're wired that way to do that and they're taking advantage of those opportunities. So I think that's what the excitement is. And on paper, I think we look different than we did when we first got here. Is 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 how I look at it too. Um, so uh, um, you know that's the excitement part. But um, you know we're fired up. We're fired up for this for this camp and and what, all the work that went into the off season. You talked about before about just kind of how you have to look at it short and long. And I know like every GM talks about that too. How do you have that set up? Like, do you have different boards? Do you have like different folders or notebooks or files? And when you, yeah. when you, like when you're trying to evaluate a short term versus a long term, I'm assuming it's, yeah. you have it. Well, it's already somewhere. It's not all in here, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're acquiring players, whether you got a draft board or you got a free agency board, every point that's part of. It's not like we have books on we have books on the cap and what the cap could be in two years and you you run your scenarios. Chris Olson does a tremendous job with that. So every player that you're acquiring, you're kind of plugging it in your scenarios down the road along with your players. So you kind of have an idea of okay, where would we be go? Where would we be in two years if we went this route at this position? You know what I mean? Um, but as far as you know, different boards of of those things, like every player, that's what you go through. You know what I mean? You're always that, there's a, a list of things that you go through in an evaluation, you know, on tape, and there's a thing that evaluation on the character makeup, evaluation of our team, what do we have on our team as of right now, what do their contracts look like? So you're going through every single one of those scenarios before drafting a player or signing a player. So like for Matthew Berger, for instance, you're looking at well, okay, you know, Matt Henderson's in a contract here. This, you know, you have this, this, and that. Like that all. Like I'm just trying to get a picture of how you guys view that. Well, Bergeron things. was was first evaluate Bergeron. We like this player a lot. You know what I mean? We're we're excited about him now. Uh, he has position versatility. We see him in one position. We'll plug him in one position like we do a lot of the players and let him let him soak, let him learn, let him compete, and then we start branching off. But um, it was about. Bergeron first, more so than the, and then obviously you look into the rest of your offensive line. It's always we're always going to look to to create depth at the offensive line, you know, like in defensive line, always, and we have to. Um, but that was more it was more about him than it was, you know. Okay, if we, you know, obviously those other scenarios you talk about, but but it was about Matt. Kyle, you uh, I've always been interested when teams make the transition from the even to the front. Like I know that you know Ryan is talking about running multiple defense, but how do you how does 
you handle the scout department from a standpoint of okay, outside linebacker versus defensive end. Yeah. Obviously, those yeah. heights and heights are different, right? So, how do you handle that as a, a, a AGM as far as well, who, as far as targeting different players? Yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, and I think we're fortunate enough that when you have Ryan Nielsen, who's he's got some versatility, he's got versatility to him to where certain body types that's really the biggest thing is body types right when you're talking about those defensive changes outside linebacker body type is different than a defensive end body type so from a scouting perspective how we go on the road we create you know we treat everything equal right like so we're scouting for our team the falcons on the college side say for example and, and in free agents pro free agency but we're scouting for us obviously and how they fit us but we're also putting value on that player regardless of what we do. You know what I mean? Because you have to, we have to have an idea of what the value of this player is, you know, overall. So then once we get to February meetings, that thing starts, we talked about the narrowing process, that thing starts narrowing down. Um, the more you go through it, the more that thing starts tightening up and now you're bringing in what we do. Does the body type match? Does the, does the skill set match what we do? Um, there is a transition from a 34 to a 43 mainly because of that body types and where are they now going to align and base we're so there's so much sub and everything you know what i mean 43s are almost they, they've become 34s and, and vice versa so um we, we didn't run into a ton of problem maybe maybe 10 years ago to, you know what i'm saying what like oaky fronts and stuff there was like a specific type you know that that a lot of players might not fit the newer system but we didn't we didn't have much of an issue with that in terms of you know now when we started adding you can see we're adding we're getting big you know and, and um, but if that answers your question there you mentioned that you guys look different on paper than when you first got here what makes you feel good about what you guys have been able to put together on paper to this point well I just think it's it's like we talked about all the player the draft picks the guys that have played um, the guys that we acquired this off season you know. Um, it's some, the depth at certain positions. Uh, that's that's what I talk about. When you look at it in our minds and as evaluators and what we see, you know, you feel good about it. You, know, you never, you know, we're always looking like that's our job. I mean, we leave here and watch tape on other teams, and you, you're looking to add, you know. So the team's going to look different now than it does. Obviously, when cuts come down, and we're always looking to add, upgrade, and do those things. It's part of the job. Um, but I certainly feel more, you know, I think excited, optimistic, you know right now than I have and and um always been optimistic but you know what I mean you guys know what I'm saying so uh but feel good about where we're at does that mean the expectation then is higher for this season is expectations is always the same for us you know it is but just the excitement level but you, you you never know you know every team 32 teams feel good about right now where we're standing you know what I mean um but uh you know and a lot of things can happen you know throughout the course of the year but I uh, certainly feel good about it. You go back to media fans that you're talking about recently. You have a guy, do you have different tiers? Like, do you tier it in some way? With the yes, media? in some <coughs> way, yeah. Yeah, I, and I mean, like, like I was saying, that guys that don't get drafted, obviously, that you have is the draft board. We don't have a million names on a draft board. You know, like we narrow it down. So the guys that are still on the draft board, that becomes a tiering, right? That's those first wave that we're going after. Um, and then so on and so forth, obviously, as it, as it goes down. But it, there is somewhat of a tearing from the, from the college scouts. I was just saying, how, how deep does that board go? Because theoretically, you could have separate players on there. Yeah, it, 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 it all depends it, it, on the team, you know, how, how many players you have on your draft board, how many, un, you know, un, unrestricted or, I mean, undrafted free agents. You know, how do you grade? Are you a trade scout? Are you a, a hard grader? You got – like I said, you get a million guys up there just because they, they played, you know, in college. I mean, some teams do it. So um, I couldn't give you the true number, you know, draft board wise. I don't want to do that. But like, you know, there's there, we haven't had a problem. We haven't run out of names. You know, that's that's a good thing. Just a couple more guys. Do you do any prep for those camp casualties that are, are salary issues? Like when a guy steps in, is there any prep you can do for what's going to happen in like, a month? For other teams, yeah, other yeah teams. well, that's what we do. We we do. That's exactly what we do. We'll, you know, we have our mindset of, you know, the pro guys will break it up and and led by Ryan Pace and and, you know, it's like we identify on everybody's roster who we call bubble players, right? And and then we're in there watching and evaluating those guys. On top of that, there's the potential cap 
casualties as you move forward. But you, you, you can anticipate that. We try to just go through the bubble guys first, and then as we get to the cuts when those names come off, you kind of get alerted to some of those guys, you know, through agents and stuff like that. Hey, my guy's about to get, you know, get hit. So, um, but that's what we do. We go through that process, yeah. Logistically, if the league came to teams and said, from now on, you're going to handle this position differently, contractually, you know, salary cap wise, would that be a nightmare or would that be something y'all could, you feel like would be okay? So, what do you mean? So, this is a hypothetical, running. right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know, but yeah. Right. Change the structure of the it's way that contract is handled. It, to it, say you know, to say what though, to like say these guys are now on shorter contracts, or these guys don't count against the salary cap, or only X percentage of them counts against the salary cap. You seen while you know all sorts of stuff floated in the last week. Or could you? How would you handle it differently if you could? So if the league if the league came to y'all and said we're going to handle it differently, would it be a nightmare? or Would it be like? Would you feel like? Well, it, 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 it depends. I guess it, you know. Hypothetically, you know, it depends on, yeah, like it depends on how, where you're at as a team. I mean, it could, is it a nightmare if, I mean, I guess if you got bad cap situation, it could be a nightmare, you know, um, if they're changing it to, I don't know, I guess any team decides the length of the contract, right? Or are you talking about rookie? Rookie, I guess, I guess rookie Yeah, like if you're changing the rookie wage scale and stuff at yeah. certain positions or, yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> My brain only works in, yeah. you know, a certain way. But uh, yeah, I mean, what we do, we figure it out. Is what we do, you know. And but I don't think it changed the way that we evaluate the player. That that for sure, we're not going to change the way that we evaluate. Um, it could have cap implications, sure. And and we'd have to kind of, you know, look at how we'd ha how we'd handle it, how we'd fit it in at any position, right? But. Um, that's crazy, crazy scenario. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. All right, thank you. Thank you.